Okay, let's go and figure out this nice little math problem here. And the problem is the following. A number minus three-fifths is nine. What is the number? So that is the question. A number minus three-fifths is nine. What is the number? If you know how to answer this question correctly, or even if you don't, uh, know how to answer correctly, go ahead and at least attempt it and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here uh, in just one second. And then, of course, we're going to walk through the solution step by step. But uh, anyways, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, not years, but decades. So that must mean I love teaching math, and that's what it means. I, uh, you know, truly am passionate about helping people learn mathematics, okay? And I can tell you right now, uh, all students can be successful in math, uh, especially those of you that are struggling in math, okay? If you're, like, listening to this and you're like, yeah, well, you're talking about other people. You're not talking about me because I fail math. I'm failing right now. I'm just terrible. I'm just naturally bad at math. There is no such thing. Yes, there's always exceptions to rules. You know, there are uh, uh, people out there with you know pretty uh, challenging uh, learning disorders. Okay, that aside, and even those students, okay, even when if you have a learning disorder, if you happen to be one, you could still be successful. How would I know that? Because I work with so many students. It's about really what you think you're capable of doing, and you can you're capable of doing so much more than you think you can, especially if you're struggling in math. You basically need three things to be successful in math. One, you need to work hard. You need the desire to want to learn math, okay? The second thing you need is encouragement. You need someone telling you that you can do this stuff so you don't give up. That's really, really important to have. Hopefully have uh, some sort of, you know, maybe a great math teacher or parent, someone that's kind of encouraging you along. But what you really, really need to learn math is great math instruction. Very clear, understandable, and comprehensive, in-depth math instruction that you actually understand. That's what you truly need to be successful in mathematics. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special exam that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, anything that has mathematics on it, or if you're homeschooling math, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description as well. Uh, most students take, uh, if they're taking notes at all, take average notes. It's really only those students that are getting like A's and A pluses in their classes that are taking outstanding notes. There is a direct correlation to your the quality of your notes to you know uh, how well you're going to do on test at least that's what i've seen those students who get like a's and a pluses are typically the students with like like great math notes the students who are getting like you know d's and f's and struggling guess what hey where's your math notes and you're like oh i i don't really have my notes or when you look at your notes they're just very confusing or incomplete so if you truly want to be successful in math start taking excellent math notes but in the meantime you can use my notes if you like to study from and if this video helps you out don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely will help me out all right so a number minus three fifths is nine what is the number i think some of you that are looking at this going oh this looks you know kind of like we might have to do some algebra to solve this problem well it's not it doesn't have to be that complex but let's take a look at the answer so a number minus three fifths is nine what is the number that number is nine and three fifths now let's just take a look at this right a number minus uh, three fifths is nine well if you had nine and three fifths so nine and three fifths this is what we call a mixed number fraction you can interpret it uh, this way nine and three fifths is the same thing as nine plus three fifths okay so this would be our number and if we subtract away a number minus three fifths that means we're going to uh, take away this amount three fifths you can see oh you we are going to get nine because these two things are going to cancel the, uh, themselves out. So 9 plus 3 fifths, if we subtract a 3 fifths from 9 and 3 fifths, we'll be left with 9. Now, I think if you look at that, 
you know, from a common sense standpoint, you're like, oh yeah, that's easy. If I subtract away three fifths from a number, it's nine. I can just add that back in and get the number. If you kind of reason through it this way and you were able to immediately identify the answer, you know what? That's good stuff, right? I would say the thumbs up, very good. But there's another approach to do this problem and uh, it is using a little bit of algebra. So we're going to talk about that here in a second, but we're not going to do anything until those of you that got this right, get your nice little happy face, your A plus, your 100% and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. All right. So really what we're talking about here, this type of problem is uh, basically we're translating a verbal phrase and we're going to translate it into an algebraic phrase. Now, this particular problem is uh, so, you know, it is kind of basic enough where you could kind of just use some common sense or reason through it. But this is a, a very, very basic version of more sophisticated type of problems you're going to do that you will need to use algebra to solve. But again, the topic here is translating. We're going to translate a verbal sentence or, uh, or phrase into an algebraic or variable sentence uh, or equation and then solve that equation. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how we can do that. So a number minus three fifths is nine. So in mathematics or algebra, a number is what? Well, we don't know what a number is. It's just some number, right? So this is where you want to use a variable. That number could be X, right? X could represent a number, Y, Z, A. These are just um, variables. A variable represents a number. So in algebra, when we use a variable, we're just representing a number. So a number, let's call that number, let's call our number X. So we're just going to go through and just translate uh, uh, word by word this verbal uh, phrase into an algebraic equation. So a number, okay, again, we're going to put X minus, well, that's pretty easy. That means the minus sign. We're talking about subtraction here. So a number minus what? Three fifths. Well, we'll put three fifths. So we got a number, some number minus three fifths is anytime you see the word is that means equal. Okay. Or equal to. So a number minus three fifths is, or is equal to. So we'll put the equal, uh, sign there, uh, is equal to what? Nine is nine. So we put a nine there. So now we translated this verbal, uh, phrase or sentence into a variable uh, phrase or sentence or equation, an algebraic equation. So we have X minus three fifths is equal to nine. So this is really what we're talking about right here. X minus three fifths is equal to nine. And so this really comes down to uh, the remainder of this problem, your ability to solve basic equations. So to solve for X, I have X minus three fifths is equal to nine. All I need to do is add three fifths uh, to both sides of the equation. Okay. So I want to really get X by itself. If I add, let's just do a real simple example. If I have X minus two is equal to seven. Well, what number minus two is equal to seven? That of course, that number would be nine, right? So to get X by X is equal to what by itself on one side of the equation, this is the solution. So I have X minus two. I don't want X minus two. I want X is equal to, so I kind of get rid of this negative two. Well, I can just add a two here. Okay. So that X minus two plus two becomes uh, zero. So, or X by itself, but whatever you do on one side of the uh, equation in algebra, you got to do equally to the other side. So X minus two is equal to seven. We have to add two to both sides of the equation. Now we have X is equal to seven plus two or uh, minus two plus two is zero. So really you have X plus zero. We don't need to uh, write that zero. We're just going to leave that as X and then seven plus two is nine. Okay. So anytime you're working with fractions or if you get a little bit confused on, Hey, am I doing the right steps? Try to reference a simple, easy prom and just to kind of check yourself like, no, no, I'm doing this correctly. I'm, you know, I got the right idea. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to add three fifths to both sides of the equation. And what do we have here? So negative three, uh, negative three fifths plus three fifths is zero. So that's X. You're going to add down in a column manner and then nine plus three fifths is what? Nine and three fifths. All right. That's what that means. Nine plus uh, three fifths is the same thing as nine plus three fifths, which is the same thing as nine and three fifths, that mixed number fraction. 
and no need to turn this into a uh, improper fraction. In other words, you don't have to go 9 times 5 is 45 plus 8 is uh, uh, 48, 48 fifths, right? If I did that correctly, this is never do this. Never volunteer, okay, to go from here to here, right? Unless you're told to do that by your teacher. Well, if you have a mixed number fraction, leave things uh, as they are, okay? If you're working in mixed numbers. And the same thing holds true. If you have an improper fraction as your answer, don't volunteer to turn that into a mixed number. Just fully simplify and reduce that answer. But anyways, you can see how we used algebra to figure out this question. But, you know, the whole idea here, I think the big picture uh, point that I'm trying to make is uh, a couple things. One, uh, sometimes you can look at a math word problem and just reason through it by common sense. Never be afraid to use common sense to solve a problem. Okay. The thing, the trick is this, uh, always try to justify the steps you did. So if you kind of reason through, you can just, you know, for those of you just easily said, well, the answer has got to be nine and three fifths. This and that's good. Okay. But again, you want to kind of uh, be able to justify your conclusions. But the second point that I want to leave you with is that uh, when you are working in algebra and algebra word problems and things like that, you're going to have to do a lot of translating, uh, translating verbal English sentences, those type things into actual variable and algebraic uh, phrases and equations. That's a huge part of um, doing mathematics, especially algebra. Okay, but if you need uh, additional help with this, I'm going to suggest that you check out like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. Uh, I believe in the first chapter, I have a whole uh, section on translating. And then this, uh, this skill um, really comes up over and over again, especially in word proms. So uh, again, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel and you can check out all my courses in terms of uh, more help um, or additional practice with word proms. But uh, here is the deal, okay? If you yourself are not actually practicing or if you just watch, if watching me do proms, watching videos is not the same as you learning math, Okay, I'll leave you with this analogy because I like it the most. If you wanted to improve and um, make uh, your basketball shots, right, and say, hey, I'm going to get better at basketball, would you watch the NBA? Would you watch your favorite basketball players all day long? Let's say you watch 10 hours a day. Will that make you better? No, that's not going to make you better. Okay, the only way you're going to get better is to go practice. And how many how many math problems should you practice? Well, if you shoot one basket and you're like, oh, I got it, yeah, you know, I got that, uh, you know, I was able to make the basket. All right. Well, is that you know, is that absolute con like a conclusive proof that you can make every single uh, basket? No, right. You need to challenge yourself. You need to go over here. You need to go over there. You need more challenging problems. Math is no different. It's a skill. Okay, just like you know any skill, the more you do of it and the proper techniques you're using, the better you will get. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.